This video will give examples of careers in precious metals using statistical analysis, physics, analytical chemistry, chemical engineering, metallurgical engineering, and others. There are over 200 analytical techniques used to determine precious metal concentrations in materials. Methods range from classical wet chemistry to fire assay and instrumental analysis. Our prior videos discuss the importance of obtaining a true sample and the various instrumental analysis methods. Fire assay is the standard and classical analysis technique used in determining the precious metal content of silver and gold containing ore and secondary concentrates. Although it is more time consuming and elaborate than instrumental analysis, it is more reliable and accurate in most cases. Fire assay is a well-established technology that has been around for thousands of years. The term fire assay dates back to ancient times where fire was used to create the high temperatures needed for the pyrometallurgical reactions occurring in this method. Fire fueled the furnaces, which over time have been replaced by gas-fired furnaces and eventually the high temperature electric lab furnaces used today. The origins of fire assay techniques have been traced to ancient Asia Minor after the discovery of the manufacturing of lead from lead ore. Very pure silver was produced from lead ores as far back as 2000 BC. The first detailed written records of the art of assaying minerals and metals appeared in D. Ray Metallica, published in 1556. Fire assays are still routinely performed on gold and silver ore samples. It is also used for the analysis of secondary or scrap materials, as well as for separating and concentrating platinum group metals, with the exception of osmium and ruthenium. The fire assay process can be broken down and explained in three basic steps. Preparation, collection, separation. Sample preparation is generally first done by grinding or milling samples into a fine powder. This is done so that the sample can be thoroughly mixed with dry powder chemicals used in the next step. Initial samples are sometimes evaluated by another method such as XRF to provide a rough indication of the composition to help determine the amount of reactant chemicals to add. The precisely weighed sample and dry reactant chemicals are then thoroughly mixed together. The collection step is called crucible fusion as the mixture is heated in a crucible, which is a ceramic or metal container used to heat contained samples to very high temperatures. The mixture is heated until all the powders fuse together into a glass-like slag where a complex series of reactions then occur to collect all of the precious metals in an alloy. The classic example is lead fusion, where lead oxide reacts in the molten slag and is reduced to fine lead droplets. The precious metals absorb into these droplets as they sink through the slag and collect at the bottom of the crucible as a precious metal bearing lead alloy. The chemicals used in the fusion process each have a specific function. Activity and viscosity are the important chemical and physical properties of the slag. An example of a typical recipe or fire assay fusion charge for quartz-based ore is shown here. Once the reaction is complete, the contents are poured into a mold or breakable crucible, allowed to cool, then the metal alloy is removed from the slag. The lead serves to collect the precious metals. Metallic samples can be processed by fire assay using lead rather than lead oxide. The samples are wrapped in lead foil to provide the lead collector. Silver is sometimes also added to help completely dissolve the sample into the lead alloy for cupellation. Platinum group metals are much more difficult to analyze using fire assay. Other metals or metal compounds such as copper or nickel sulfide are sometimes added as collectors when platinum group metals are present. The third step in the fire assay process is to separate the precious metals from the collector. The separation step is called cupellation, as the precious metals are separated from the collector in a cupel. A cupel is a porous ceramic vessel 
which is typically a shallow cup made of porous bone ash or calcium phosphate. When lead fusion is used, the lead alloy bead is placed into the capel and heated in air to 850 C, 1562 Fahrenheit. As the alloy melts, the lead is oxidized along the surface of the small pool of molten metal. The lead oxide then absorbs into the cupel. This continues until all the lead is drawn out, leaving a small bead containing only precious metals to complete the separation from the collector. The bead is then weighed and analyzed further for precious metal content using an instrumental analysis technique such as ICP AES. When silver is present in a gold bearing sample, the bead can be further analyzed by parting or dissolving away the silver content in nitric acid solution leaving the gold. Concentrations can then be calculated by the weight ratios. Low concentration samples will produce very small beads so silver is sometimes added in the fire assay process as a way of obtaining a larger metal bead which improves accuracy of results. As with instrumental analysis, there are instances where the presence of other metals interferes with results, so other analytical methods must be used. Fire assay is the workhorse of precision analysis for precious metals. It is a highly accurate analytical method used for both primary and secondary sources of precious metals. Wet chemistry, or gravimetric analysis, will be reviewed in our next video. The International Precious Metals Institute promotes the education and advancement of precious metals technology and business. IPMI is an international association of companies committed to providing technical resources and educational materials, including a series of videos presenting examples of precious metal applications and a variety of interesting and rewarding career opportunities.